here with Glenn Lorbecki talking about his new book, Mixing and Mastering with Pro Tools by Glenn Lorbecki. How's it going, Glenn? Good, Bill. How are you? I'm doing fine, thank you. Um, just wanted to ask you a couple questions about the book and how this all came about. And uh, Can you tell me a little bit about your background with Pro Tools? You know, in Seattle, we uh, started in probably in the late 80s. We were one of the most digital audio workstation friendly towns in the country. So we got started working on some other proprietary platforms, but they just proved to be too expensive. When Pro Tools showed up as a viable alternative, all of the engineers started switching over to Pro Tools because it was fast, it was inexpensive, um, it did most of the things that you wanted to do. Um, and so we sort of grew up with Pro Tools in our back pocket over the years. Um, you know, fast forward now, 15 years later, and uh, all of those proprietary workstations have fallen by the wayside. And now what we find is that Pro Tools is in use in just about every studio in the world, professional, semi-pro, home studios. Uh, it's ubiquitous. You, you've been teaching it for a while too, right? Yeah, we, uh, since 2007, we've been teaching uh, the authorized uh, AVID curriculum. So we're teaching the, the 100 level classes uh, on, on route to certifying people as uh, certified Pro Tools operators. Tell me a little bit about what's in the book. I, I teach audio production at the University of Washington as well, and we get a really wide variety of students. And I kind of look at that as being the target audience for, uh, for this book or for this series of books. Um, we get people who own Pro Tools in the class. We also get people who really don't use uh, a workstation at all. So uh, in the book, I kind of have to uh, go through the basics for the benefit of the people who haven't used Pro Tools or any workstation before. Um, and then for those who have Pro Tools or maybe have an earlier version and are looking to upgrade, uh, we give them some of the tips and tricks behind the newer versions and get them up to speed as quickly as possible. Um, one of the issues with manuals when they come from the manufacturer is that they tend to be this thick um, and they take forever to read in order for you to really glean a good solid understanding and, and uh, foundation for using the, the platform. So with this book, as you can see, it's only this thick. Uh, <laughs> the idea is to try to get you up to speed as fast as possible and, and get you using these skills in your everyday work. And now there's a DVD that comes with this book too. And how does that work together with the text? What's on the DVD? Um, the DVD contains some sessions. Uh, we've set up a couple of Pro Tools sessions with a, an artist that I've worked with in the past. Uh, We've got some mix sessions, some editing sessions. Um, in the second book, we've got some tracking examples that we go through, overdubs, comping tracks, that sort of thing. Um, and in the Pro Tools 10 book, we obviously uh, have some of these exercises to take you from A to Z um, in, uh, in working in Pro Tools. Uh, there are also some videos uh, that show you some things that you won't necessarily be able to get from the text. There are some subtleties in, in operating within Pro Tools. Uh, and the videos kind of help walk you through that. Um, there are lots of different kinds of learners. Some people learn by reading, they, uh, some people learn by uh, observing or watching a video. Other people need to get hands-on. And what I'm after is, is trying to maximize all three methods of learning so that people can uh, uh, read about it and then support that by watching the video and then practice what we're teaching in the book. And you also go through some things in your books too that talk about calibrating Pro Tools systems that that aren't commonly known. Um, yeah, being an old school guy, I mean, I grew up on two inch tape machines and analog consoles. Um, that's the first thing you did every day when you showed up for work is you calibrated your machines. If, if you don't know where zero dB is, you have no idea what you're recording or mixing. Um, and so to, to, that kind of follows me through to this day. Uh, when I start my Pro Tools sessions or when I work on someone else's Pro Tools rig, I want to make sure that zero is zero. So there are some methods that you can use even without an HD rig, even on your, your simple M-Audio I.O. There are some things that you can do to calibrate your system to make sure that you're following Unity gain rules and, and that you don't mess up your gain structure and end up with more noise or more distortion than you really want. 